Hey everybody, this is a story from the fall of 1980 when I was six years old. This is the first time in this lifetime that I was abducted under the Project Surrogate Program, which is a joint military Draco Orion ET program that, that intercepts, abducts, and hijacks the souls of psychic children that are born into this world to be agents of positive change. So this is connected to things like the Super Soldier Program um, and uh, the SSP, the Secret um, Space Program. So anyway, I talked about this um, in a previous video that I did, oh, almost two months ago now. And it was a video that I had to pull down because it, it, con it contained the um, voicemail messages of a, a very, very close friend of mine who was very upset with the fact that I used her voicemail messages without permission. So I'm just going to be doing a recounting of this story. So you may have already heard it. And I'm going to be adding some new caveats to this because some new memories have surfaced involving this abduction event. Now, the reason I haven't talked about this abduction event before is because I was under the impression that it was a figment of my imagination, that what I remembered is exactly what happened and there's nothing more to it. But that's part of the extraterrestrial mind control programming that's involved with this also with this military program. So I was told that this was just something that I concocted or, or it was part of a like a, a fear oriented type of imaginative state that I found myself in as a child and it didn't really happen. Fact is, is that it did happen. The problem is, is that just recently, about seven weeks ago, I underwent hypnotic regression and I'm going to be um, finishing up the editing on that video uh, probably by tomorrow. <clears throat> so anyway, you get to see that. But the problem was with my hypnotic regression is I wasn't able to recover these memories involving the rest of the memories involving this abduction event. But there were some other things that were unlocked, which were extremely important and had to be done first. So that'll be the subject of the next two videos. So let's get to this. What happened was, is back in the, when I was, um, let's see, when I was five years old, it was the Christmas of, of 1979. And uh, I, wanted a, I wanted to ride a bike, so I wanted a bicycle. So my grandparents got together with my mother and they put their money together and they bought me this red bicycle. And um, I think I even picked it out. I think it was some Toys R Us. So it had training wheels on it. And um, so I got it for Christmas. It was Christmas in 1979. And then I started uh, riding the bicycle a little bit at a time, just up and down the sidewalk throughout the winter of 1980. So by f the fall of 1980, I'd pretty much ridden everywhere in the neighborhood. I was only supposed to go down the street a little bit just a few doors down from the house, but eventually I pushed the envelope and I was going around the block and then I went a little bit further and I started going down to this park at the very end of the street. And um, I'd ride around there and spend most of my days there, but I'd come, but I would go back and forth to make sure that my grandparents thought that I was close by. So anyway, what happened was on this one particular day, I'd been riding my, I, I actually had ridden all over the park and it was approaching five o'clock. It was probably, three or four o'clock and I noticed that the sun was a certain position in the sky I was starting to feel hungry and it was time to get home so I took the long way out of the park and the park is a series of fields there was a concession or actually there was the remains of concession stand it was ripped down but there was a um, several large fields and then on one side of the park there was uh, an asphalt um, it was it was a wooded path and an asphalt path and they ran parallel to each other and it connected into this longer asphalt path that went around this big field. So I decided instead of taking a shortcut through the park and over the hill and in, into the end of my street, I wanted to go through the wooded path and through the asphalt path to get through the woods first because I wanted the scenic route. So I started to uh, ride the bike and I went around the edge of the big field and I entered the woods and I was concerned about the older kids in the neighborhood 
because there was a, a an, an, an area that was a clearing in the middle of the woods and I had a rope swing and there was a fort that used to be there so oops, I had an itch so anyway I was concerned that if I made eye contact with the older kids in the neighborhood that they were gonna say something to me so I figured if I just just rode past them if they were there and I just didn't make eye contact everything would be cool so I had this plan going in the you know into the wooded section of the park so as I get around the bend I start getting really really nervous and it was kind of an unusual bit of nervousness and fear because there was nothing to indicate that anybody was there but I literally felt like there would be somebody there and that it wasn't going to go very well so as I got a little bit further in I noticed that I could see a group of people like this itchy nose I could see a a group of people and this turned out to be a total of seven because I've had information that, have, that has come from this memory since so I'm gonna add that in too so I noticed there was a group of seven people what was interesting about it is is that every single one of them was dressed in navy blue they had navy blue hoodies they had navy blue pants their footwear may have been similar I didn't pay much attention to it but they were all very, very tall. I mean, I would say probably about six feet, but what was unusual about their height is that it was completely uniform. There wasn't any one of the group that was shorter than this, and nobody was taller. They were all perfectly uniform. They had the same exact build. They were very, very thin, very wiry. I mean, they had very, very skinny legs and very, very skinny arms, and they all had their hoods pulled up. And well, as I looked, I didn't want to make eye contact. So I was going mainly from my peripheral field of vision. And, and I was looking at an angle. And I could see that one of them, I could see part of his face, but I could see it looked like he had a Halloween mask on or one of those wrestling luchador masks or possibly a ski mask. And I thought that was a bit odd because it wasn't cold. It was just a little chilly. It's maybe in the 50s. And as I'm looking and, you know, I'm just kind of glancing at this point, I noticed that some of the other ones had what looked like could be a mask as well. And it was very white looking. And uh, at this point, it was weird because now everybody's got, I mean, every, everybody's wearing a hoodie. It's, everybody's got the exact same clothes. They're wearing the same color and they're the same height. So it's like everybody looks the same and it's, a, and it's a group of them. And you know, there was no Blue Ninja Club in the neighborhood. There was nothing where kids got together and wore Halloween masks and dressed in exactly in, in the exact same way. So I had to look at this point, and I, as I glanced over, and they were all standing around this fallen tree, and uh, I think it was a fallen pine tree, or yeah, it was a fallen it was a fallen pine tree. And they were standing around it, and as I looked, the one of them took like a, a step sideways, a very odd step sideways. It was a strange kind of maneuver, um, almost like they were high stepping. And as I looked, I could see that from the edge, from the, from the side, it mal that many of them had some kind of a white mask on. But then when I looked at the one that was closest to me, that's the one that really freaked me out because when he looked at me, I didn't see his face completely straight on. I saw about half of it. And what I saw was, is what looked like either a ski mask or a luchador mask, but it had a huge eyes. I mean, the eyes were very, very big, and that's what I had seen from the side on some of the, actually one of the other ones, the first one that I saw. It looked like they had a mask on, but I couldn't tell what it was. And as I looked, and he, he, I could see about half the face, and it had this white, it was, it was like a, a white strip of fabric sewn in, like an edge. And it went all the way around this big black eye and there wasn't skin behind the eye like a person would have you know where you'd see a big area of skin and a little eye this was one big black eye and instantly as soon as i as soon as i saw that i had this gut it was a shot came across my gut if you've ever been like walking into a room unsuspect, uh, unsuspecting and somebody jumps out and scares the crap out of you and you get that jolt of fear that goes through your gut. Well, that's what I had, but it was worse because I felt this building up as I got closer to the clearing. I felt it just going in the woods. I got nervous and then it started to build. So now I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm getting hit with this shot of fear. And as this is happening, I've already turned my head 
and I'm looking straight ahead and I'm trying to pedal off. I'm, I'm now standing up on the pedals and I'm trying to get out of there because now I'm freaking out. But at the same time that I got this shot of fear through my gut as I saw the face and turned away from it, I felt this blast of energy hit me in the back of my head. And the way it felt was, it was, I describe it as being viscous because it kind of felt like it had a mass to it. And that's what psychic energy often feels like when you're, when you're hit with it. Um, and and in, in this case, it hit me in the back of my head and then it flowed directly down my spine to my tailbone, to my backside. And um, as it did, I had that jolt of fear that went that shot right through my gut. So <clears throat> what I remember was initially, this was the screen memory that was put over it. The screen memory was that, you know, I saw, well, I think that, I think when I saw them, that was actually part of the real memory, but where the, sc the screen memory came into, into it is when all I remember was pedaling out of the woods as fast as I could. I got out of the uh, asphalt path and I got into this little clearing that was just before the end of the street. And I got on the sidewalk and I rode straight up the sidewalk to my grandparents' house as fast as I could, and I didn't stop until I got about maybe a half to two thirds of the way up the street, at which point I had to stop and get my breath. Because I had gone over, I'd say maybe a little over a quarter mile, maybe a little further in just a really rapid amount of time. And I was freaked out. So I remember stopping and then get my breath and going back home and then just kind of just shrugging it off and then you know years later i'd ask about it i'd ask the older kids in the neighborhood and when i grew up and became an adult and i you know I'd, I'd ask anybody that i could periodically um you know whenever i thought of it hey was there ever a blue ninja club was there ever some kind of thing where everybody got together and like dressed the same and and you know and would kind of look the same the same height i mean it just didn't make sense to ask this question but nobody nobody recalled anything like that it just sounded ridiculous so I gave up asking about it. Then when I started having ET contact, I would ask about it. Of course, I was being lied to. I was dealing with Draco and Ryan ETs that were attempting to prevent me from figuring out what was really going on with me. And I was told that I wasn't abducted, and then I told I then I was told that I was, and then it was retracted again, so I didn't know what to believe. And that was the plan, that was the strategy. Get me to just figure, you know, to just forget all about it and not pursue it because it had no relevance. But it did. So <clears throat> now the rest of this, this is um, some memory fragments that I recovered. Um, I think it was, um, I don't know if it was before my hypnosis session or if it was after. I don't really remember specifically. But um, what I remember is, is when I got hit in the back of the head with the energy, what took place was, is I came to a stop and I was paralyzed at that point and I floated off the bicycle and so did the bike as soon as i flowed as soon as i left the bicycle the bicycle floated with me i had initially thought that if these were grays that were dressed up in, in these outfits that they would actually have come over surrounded me and then taken me away with them and in fact they never came near me and um <clears throat> so i remember floating away from the bicycle and then as i as i lifted up in the air i could see the trees above me i could see you know the canopy of trees because I was, I was on an asphalt path, so there was a little bit of a, a light canopy over top of me. And uh, I remember seeing the trees, and then everything just faded to like a light blue color, and I felt so comfortable. All of my fear was gone. I felt warm, like somebody just enveloped me in, in just the warmest, most comfortable, you know, like, like a sleeping bag or a comforter. I was just, you know, I, I just felt like a baby, just being held by its mother, and just swooped up into the air, and I felt weightless. And, and uh, I lost consciousness. So, and that was one half of the, of the memory fragment. The other half of the memory fragment is likely on my return, but it could have been a, during my exit, but I don't think so because it doesn't fit in. So it had to be at the end. And what I remember seeing is being further down the path towards the, um, the very beginning uh, of, the, um, of uh, the nature trail that I was on. And uh, I saw a group of grays and uh, they were standing in the clearing because there was an area that was part of the clearing, you know, because it had a little bit of canopy over top. But there was in the very center of the clearing, about maybe 30 or 40 feet away from the rope swing, was a completely clear area where you could look straight up to the sky. 
I saw the grays and they actually weren't grays really. They, they look like grays because they had the big eyes. They had the, the shape of the head. They were very tall and thin, so they were like a tall gray, but their, their skin wasn't gray. It was completely chalk white, like stark white. I mean, like a pure white color with a contrasting, incredibly large black almond-shaped eye. And they had the exact same features that you'd see um, with other types of uh, aliens that look like that, but have, but have the gray skin. So these are some kind of albino tall gray beings. Um, and I saw them standing in a circle in the clearing. They had their arms outstretched and their arms were touching each other and they, their arms were forming like a circle, like a Stonehenge kind of thing where it's got like a top on it. So they were outstretched like that and they were all connected together and there was a light above them, which I would assume was the ship that was directly above and then I had come floating down from it and was returning to the bicycle while they were being lifted up. Um, so. You know, that's what I remember of it. This is something that I'm going to have to work on to recover more memories for. And there's probably probably a long, a long list of other abductions that I need to go through from my childhood because there's periods of time when I had a lot of visitations at night. These were night frights, but I would also feel, I would also sense that there was a presence coming into the room at night with me. <clears throat> and this happened quite frequently and I remember one particular one one particular night I was laying in bed and I felt a presence come into the room and um, this was probably before I was six years of age this was probably around maybe five could have been six but I don't think I was any older than seven so it's likely it likely took place before because I had visitations during my during the early part of my childhood because I've been in, because I had been in this military ET program for a lot longer than this lifetime, so this was the second lifetime in a row that I had been hijacked. So I had, I was laying there and I felt a presence come in the room, and what happened was is, is I got scared, <clears throat> so I pulled the covers over my head, and um, I had this specific sheet that I really liked. I had two of them actually. One was like um. A blue color and it had like blue I think bluebirds on it and blue flowers and I had a yellow one that had yellow flowers on it and they both made out of the same material and I used to talk my grandmother and always giving me those sheets because they just felt really really good in the summertime and even in the winter they were smooth and they and they just kept me cool I didn't I didn't ever heat so I pulled this over my head and I'm like scared to death and I've all I've got is this little thin sheet and there's this something on the other side in the room with me and I'm scared to death at this point. And all of a sudden, the bed started shaking, just like in the movie The Exorcist. I mean, it was going. It wasn't like lifting off the floor, but it was like it was like putting a quarter or 50 cents in a vibrating, you know, like you're in a hotel and, and they had a vibrating mattress. They used to have those back in the 70s. And um, it was, you know, the bed just shook and it lasted for a couple of minutes to the point where when it ended, I was completely saturated in sweat. I mean, like dripping sweat. My under, my, my, my pajamas, my underwear, they were saturated with sweat. Um, my hair was wet. And I just laid there for a good hour after this took place and I didn't look, I didn't peer out. And I finally, at some point, at least an hour later, um, I, I found the courage to start to peek out and I looked around the room and, you know, as my eyes started to really adjust and I, there was nothing there at that point. But that very well could have been one of those instances where I had an abduction. There's no telling what happened. Um, at, the very, at the bare minimum, they were trying to scare me, which is something that happened quite a bit because whenever I encountered these, these entities or these sensations, which were extraterrestrials, it was always fear-based. It was always something that scared me. So if they were benevolent and good, then why would they leave? Why would they give you that feeling? Because they're not. So anyway, that's the story of my abduction at six. And this is the, just the beginning of, of me trying to recover these memories. Um, I've got a couple more videos tonight. So this is the first one. Um, the next video, I'm going to talk about um, uh, probably my soul transference memory. So and that's something I have to update uh, from the last time that I did it, which was close to a year ago. So this is going to be a new version of it. And if I don't do that, I'll do something else. But uh, just kind of think about it. So. I'm kind of playing catch up with you guys because there's a lot of things to talk about. There's a lot more about myself that I'm aware of. 
And um, I'm here to share all of these things and to help you understand what's really going on with our reality and our world and our universe so that you um, are better able to navigate the augmented reality. So anyway, have a great night and I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Take care and be kind to each other because um, that's the way we're going to actually work our way out of this mess is by loving each other unconditionally and seeing beauty in all things. Take care and I'll see you soon.